Hello, pilots of the internet. Welcome to Foldable Flight. My name is Kyle, and this is where I teach you how to fold paper airplanes that will blow your mind. And here we have another world record fold and fly plane, the Super Canard. In the last video, I asked you guys which plane you wanted to see next from this project with John Collins, and overwhelmingly, this was the plane you picked. So I'm gonna give you guys an opportunity now to vote for the next video. You can choose between the tube, Boomerang 1, and Boomerang 2. And I'll kind of check that maybe Wednesday next week and see which plane you guys want to see next. If you don't know what the World Record Fold and Fly Planes is, it's a collaboration between me and John Collins, the world record holder for longest distance paper airplane flight. We took eight of John's very best designs. We're talking planes that boomerang back to you, planes that flap as they fly, a tube plane that literally just spirals as it flies, and the world record plane herself, as well as some others. And I designed illustrated templates for those planes. And if you buy the world record fold and fly planes, you get three copies of each of those eight templates. So if that interests you, head over to foldableflight.com or the paperairplaneguy.com to buy your copies. Now, I'm also going to leave a card in the top right corner that goes to John's YouTube channel. So if you're interested in seeing some of his content here, you can click that. Now, without any further ado, I'm going to show you guys how this plane flies, and then I'll pass it over to John to teach you how to fold it. This amazing looking plane is called the Super Canard. It's got this little wing in front, and that little wing in front, when you angle this little edge just a little bit more than the main wing, angle that upward, what happens in flight is that that little wing will stall first, drop the nose down, and keep the main wing flying. So it's really a stall-resistant paper aircraft. And to make the plane, we're going to start with our super canard paper. And the little arrow goes on top. Looks just like this. This is going to be the tail. This is going to be the nose. And of course, you can see the outline of the little wings right here. <laughs> That's one of the advantages of having this, this nice paper here. You can kind of see how the plane's gonna turn out uh, in advance. So we're gonna start by folding the plane in half the long way. And really take your time and line up the corners. You'll see that on all of these instructional videos, I really go slow on the first step to make sure that everything is right. So. If you make a mistake here, it's going to follow through the rest of the plane. So there we go. Fold it in half. I'm just going to tighten in just a bit so the rest will be a little bit easy. Double check focus. There we go. Now, uh, the next move is to fold one third of the paper over. And in order to do that, if you're using our paper here, foldable flight and the paper airplane guy paper, you've got a one third mark right there. If you're not using the paper that we're providing here, what you're going to do is fold it over in such a way that the layered part is the same width as the unlayered part. But we're going to use our mark because it's just easier to do that. One of the advantages to having custom paper, you've got a mark. Okay, now we're going to do a series of squash folds here. If you're unfamiliar with a squash fold, I'll run through one and then I'll do the rest of them a little bit quicker um, just to save you some time on the video. So a squash fold works like this. You're going to lift the loop of paper up that you're going to squash. You're going to open it just like that and then start to move this creased edge down so that it flattens out and the creased edge is going to flatten out right in the center. You're going to line up the center here with this creased edge here, what was the creased edge, it's now just a flat crease. Line it up and flatten the whole thing out. Now we're going to make the same fold on the opposite side over here. And so the easy way to do that, flip the whole thing over, lift up this layer. <laughs> it's a lot, it's a big tall layer now, lift it up. And we're going to open that up as well. And kind of you know go inside there, start moving that creased corner or the creased edge down. I'm going to flip it over here just uh, so that when we're making this, these corners stay lined up. These little corners here that we already have done, make sure they stay lined up with the center. 
hold those down like that. And then the new creased edge, we're going to hold flat just like that. Smooth everything out. And what you're going to notice here is that what we've got on this plane is actually an old style water bomb base that's just a little bit taller than a regular uh, water bomb base. So ordinarily, this layer would come all the way down and meet here. So you kind of short sheeted this little top triangle on the classic water bomb base. And we did that by starting with one third of the paper rather than using the whole paper, uh, the whole, a whole square to create these, these corners here. All right, more squash folds coming. Every corner here is going to get squash folded. So this one, this one, this one, and this one, we're going to squash fold all four of those. So let's just start with the one on the right. We're going to lift that up, put our finger inside to open it up. And once again, line it up with the center very carefully. And this top corner, be careful with this. Work it slowly. Push on it slowly so that it go, all your creases go all the way to the top and meet really cleanly there. That's super important. You want to make sure that you've got a nice clean point here on the top. If I go in just a little bit, you'll be able to see we've got a nice clean point right here. And so make sure that you're controlling the layers all the way to the top. And then make a crease. Of course, you want this center crease lined up perfectly with the center crease, with the center crease right there. And then uh, move the left side back over to the right. That's one side done. We're going to do the rest of, we're going to squash fold all four corners. So here we go, opening that up, moving that down, squashing that, being very careful to get the, the fold all the way to the top. Move that back to the left. Uh, flip it over. It's easier to flip over and, and squash the other two corners. Here's one corner coming down. Again, teasing that crease so that it goes all the way to the top. Move it the direction from where it came. Pull out just a little bit so you can see the all of the model there. And then the final corner here gets squashed. Same procedure. Just make sure it's going all the way to the top. Make sure our edges line up. And then we'll move that back to the left. And let's flip it back over so that now the short side is up one more time. So the next move is to do what's called a pedal fold. If you've studied a little bit of origami, this is going to be easy for you. If you've never done a pedal fold before, hang on. Here you go. Here's your first pedal fold. So... Um, now that we've got it oriented, you got your numbers at the bottom. We have this little assembly at the top. We're really going to be working with just this much of it right now. So I'm going to push in a little bit so we can just see just that much. And the first part of making the pedal fold is to take this raw edge and put it up against the center. You're going to do that on both of these raw edges, but let's just do the right hand one here first. This guy comes up just to the center. And we're going to do the same thing for the other side. Again, this raw edge is coming to the center. Just kind of double check that both of these little corners are meeting in the same place and that your crease goes nice and neatly all the way down to this uh, corner here. That is the beginning of the pedal fold, getting those lined up. Now we're going to unfold these two guys that we just made. And you'll see that these creases go all the way up here onto this layer, this layer, the top layer. So we're going to make a couple of things happen here. Uh, one of them is going to be that a crease is going to go from the end of both of these creases, going to go straight across here. Uh, in order to get that to happen, we're going to start to lift this top layer. As we lift the top layer, we're going to push the sides in so that the sides come up and meet the end of that crease that we just made there. Push the side in on this side. And now we're getting ready to make that crease that goes straight across. As we make the, street, uh, the crease that goes straight across this corner to this corner, we're going to let the paper come to the inside here and come to a point right at the center crease. So what we've done here is create what would be sort of the edge of a flower petal. If you were making a flower, this would be a really cool fold to know how to make. You'd make all these petals going around the edge of the flower. So let's just look at what we've done here all together. So we started here. 
And you can kind of see all the finished creases now, so it kind of makes sense. So we started with making a couple of reference folds here on both sides, unfolding those, and then to make the crease that goes across here to here, we lift up this top layer following the direction of the crease on the bottom and creating a couple of new creases that come to a point right in the center. Now, that's you, you'll, you may have to practice that a couple of times. It may not be completely obvious, even though you're getting a nice close-up view here, exactly how the pedal fold works. So uh, practice that a couple of times. I wouldn't use the, the, this fancy paper for practice. Use another sheet um, for practice. I'm just going to pull out just a little bit so you can see this next move happening. Um, and this next move starts by just moving that little triangle down, that pedal fold move. We're going to push that down. And then we're going to flip it so that it's inside. And it's going to end up in this same position, in the upward position, but it's going to be upward and inside this whole layer here. So to do that, we take these two edges, pull them out and rotate down a little bit, and just let that crease pop the other way, and then poke it up inside and follow the existing creases. And we've reversed the direction of that pedal. I'm going to do that one more time because that's really, that's evil tricky. So <laughs> we've started like this with the pedal fold, move the top of the pedal fold down, and then grab these two legs, just the top two layers here, and pull out and rotate and, and keep pulling out until that, that crease turns on you. It will, it will ordinarily be that direction. Pull and rotate down until it starts moving inside and then just push it inside and bring the rest of it together. That is a tricky move. I don't expect that you're going to get that on the first try if you've never done uh, a sink fold or reverse to pedal fold before. That's, that's a hard one. Okay. Uh, now, the thing to remember is the next couple of moves are all going to rely on this invisible, at least from this angle, this invisible layer here. We're going to use that peak of that triangle there as a limit uh, to make the, the canards in front. So the first thing we're going to do to create the canards is reverse this crease right here. This crease that goes on the inside here. Not the top layer, but this, this actual crease right here. It's not this layer. It's the crease next to the layer, this guy right here. So that's going to get reversed all the way up to the point of that triangle. So I'm just reversing that. Got my thumb inside there. You could use a finger, a pencil if you want to. So now that's starting to reverse. And you'll notice that the rest of the layers won't let you do that. So let's pinch that together. Just hold it together as though it were reversing nicely for you. And you'll notice that you're getting some bubbling down here. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to fix this kind of from... Uh, the bottom layer up. So again, the reverse goes all the way up to the peak of that inside triangle. Hold it together and let's flatten out the back layer, which means from the that little invisible triangle peak all the way down to this corner here. Uh, we're going to just make a crease and then press down on top of that. And we're going to make this lie flat by just creating a little triangle right here. So let me push in so you can see this little triangle forming right here. Double check focus to make sure we just you can see that really clearly. So this little triangle gets formed. And again, we're just holding together this reversed creased edge here in order to reference everything else. And you can kind of see we're just lining up at the peak of this little triangle inside here. So there's the triangle. There's our new crease. Now we're going to do the same thing to the other side. I'm going to go slowly on that side as well. So you can kind of see all this happening. So we're going to start by reversing this crease all the way up, just changing direction on that. Going to hold that together. We're just going to double check to make sure we're in the same point here. We're going to go just a little bit higher here. And then to flatten it out, we start with flattening the back layer first so that this back layer comes right down to this corner here. Oops, maybe a little bit too far, a little too aggressive there. There we go. And then uh, press the top layer flat uh, last. And so that top layer should create a nice little triangle here that matches the triangle on the other side. These two guys should be the same size. This one looks a little bit smaller on this model. I'm just going to double check that I've got these guys. Ah, there we go. So there's the error. It needs to go just a skosh higher. I'll remake this crease back here. And then this guy should come out a little bit a little bit bigger. There we go. So those two guys are close, close-ish. My creases are coming together at the right point here. And we're going to move on to the next uh, fold. And uh, to make the next fold, we're going to narrow, we're going to narrow these canards even further. Remember, they're going to be, 
this size when we're all done and they're still a little fat. You can see they're still a little fat right there. So we're gonna narrow them even further and the, to start doing that, we're gonna fold this corner up so that this raw edge just touches that layer right there. I think we're zoomed in all the way, so I can't really give you a tighter shot of that, but I think you'll get the idea here. On both sides here, we're gonna fold up these corners so that this raw edge just touches this layer right here. And then to make this flap narrower, let's unfold this and we're gonna lift just the top layer now. And we're just gonna lift it up to this point here, the end of this crease. We're gonna start folding it over and we're gonna fold from that point out to the tip of the canard. So the first crease to narrow, the first layer to narrow is that back layer. We're gonna work back to top again. Get that guy laying down. That's where we want it to be. And then we're gonna bring the next layer up. See, you've got a bubble here. We're gonna pinch that bubble together, creating another bubble underneath, weirdly, and bring that layer up. And as we do that, you can see this layer start to bubble. So now we just have to press this whole thing flat. And what you wanna do is as you're pressing it flat, you're gonna make a new crease that goes from this little corner all the way down to this corner right here. This is a wicked hard uh, sequence right here. It's one of the weirdest, hardest sequences that you'll do, but it's worth learning. It's a really fun uh, plane to fly, really striking looking plane. And once you've got that assembly made, let's just lift up that layer and tuck that under. And there you see, there's your canard starting to happen there. All right, we're gonna repeat this for the other side. I'm gonna go slowly again. So we've folded up this outside or folded up this corner so that this raw edge right here just touches this guy right here. Unfold that, and now we're gonna make a crease that goes from there to there. Start by bringing the top layer up and make the crease so that it just hits the corner of the canard. Make sure it's straight across there, going straight across. Okay, we've got a bubble happening there. Let's pinch that bubble together, which is gonna create a new bubble underneath. And then you're gonna um, flatten that bubble from this point all the way to that point. So here we go. Flattening, try to make that come out as even as you can. It doesn't really matter. You don't, you're not trying to hit this corner up here. Uh, that's gonna get buried underneath this layer here anyway. So you don't have to worry about that. But make sure you've got a, a nice sharp point there and you've gone from this corner to this corner pretty cleanly there. And then look at, that's gonna disappear for you. Don't even have to worry about how cleanly that came out. So uh, now, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit and we're getting ready to reverse fold these flaps to the outside. These are gonna be our main wings and they're too small if we leave them like this. So let's get, let's get these guys started to go outside here. And we're gonna do that by making a crease that goes from this corner all the way to this corner. We're just gonna move that to the outside. And we're getting ready to reverse fold these. So we're just making some preliminary folds here and we're gonna reverse these wings so that they sit really nicely. I'm moving that layer to the outside. Again, this corner, all the way down to this corner. Trying not to exceed our limits here, but just hit them. All right, now we're gonna reverse fold these flaps. The crease that's actually gonna get reversed is kind of this little guy here. So move it back for just a second and then you tuck that inside. And you can see the difference there. I haven't changed the shape of this guy. I've just reversed to this fold right here so that this guy stays a little bit more flat. It keeps, stays locked together. And so unfold that for just a moment and then you're gonna reverse from that corner just right there. Just making a little bit of a reverse fold just to help the plane stay together nicely. And now, the easy part, we're gonna fold this guy in half, make the wings, the main wing crease and, and the winglets, and we're done. So there's not too much left. If you've made it this far, you're going all the way here. Not a problem. Okay, let's rotate it. We're gonna fold it in half so that uh, this, this guy, we're gonna start with this guy on top. The nice red stuff is on top. The blue is gonna be on the bottom. Boop, flip it over, red's on top. Fold it in half. And what I love about the shape of this plane is that it's got this old school kind of dart in there. And you're gonna make that old school dart shape by following this layer, 
moving that layer just down to the center crease here. So this is, this is one of those really cool moments when you're creating kind of a, this old school dart design inside of this really high tech looking, really cool looking plane that's gonna be stall resistant for you. So I flipped it over and I'm doing the other wing. Again, we're starting right at the nose, rolling the wing over, making that, I'm gonna move in just a little bit here, double check focus. And let's make the wings match perfectly here. Especially the rear corners, you wanna make sure those line up nicely. Make sure this crease travels pretty cleanly all the way up to the nose. And then we'll go ahead and make our crease. Looks pretty good. Now we're making winglets. And of course we've got natural breaks here for the winglet folds. So yeah, these, these guys wanna be parallel with the wing creases. And if you're using our really fancy paper, it's gonna be so easy. You're just gonna follow the color layers here. Bring those guys up just like that. Flip it over, do the other side. You're gonna bring it up just like that. And of course, follow that layer right there. And you know, don't rely entirely on the color. Make sure that you're lining up, you know, the creases so that they're symmetrical. You know, it, the the printing can be just a tiny bit off. So you want to make sure your your wings are going to match. But follow those those uh, color uh, demarcations are a great reference point. So you can see how much uh, wing you're folding up. So here we go. The folding is complete. Now we're going to do a little adjusting on the uh, super canard. So the first thing to do is to get the wings almost level. You can give yourself a little tiny bit of positive dihedral, although you've got so much winglet action here. Winglets um, actually create what's called effective dihedral by uh, making the, the wingtip vortices shed a little bit more cleanly and uh, controlling the left-right roll on the plane. It's called effective dihedral, so you don't have to rake the back of the plane so much up. And what we're gonna do uh, is right here, you've got these nice little shaded areas. You're just gonna bend those guys upward a little bit. And that's a good reference. You don't wanna go any deeper than these guys in terms of that upward bend. And that's gonna angle the front of that wing upward a little bit so that the uh, angle of incidence is higher on the little wing than it is on the main wing. So when the plane gets close to stall phase, the little wing stalls first, drops the nose down and keeps the main wing flying. So what you've got at the end of the day is a stall resistant paper airplane. And you might add just a little bit of up elevator right here. And that is plenty. I would test flight before you add that, but more than likely you'll have to add just a little bit and a little bit of upward bend there to get the super canard to fly correctly. But what a cool looking plane. <laughs> really proud of this one from Foldable Flight and the paper airplane guy working together to design something that's really spectacular here in terms of flight and in terms of the way the plane looks.